Aloha and welcome to our Word of Life radio program here in wonderful Okinawa, Japan. We give glory to the Lord of the Harvest. There's a harvest blessing here for you tonight. <laughs> you know, God is always giving us opportunities. They just don't come dressed the way we sometimes imagine they would come. But these opportunities are to mature us spiritually. They're to expand our vision, unlock our potential. They are to increase a capacity that we don't even realize we carry. It is though to stretch our faith in arenas and in areas that we never imagined we could. Remember when Jesus was speaking to one of his disciples and he told him to feed the multitudes in John chapter six. And he said, what is 200 denarii? You know, it's not enough to feed all these people. But the Bible says in John chapter 6 in the message, he's, that Jesus said this to stretch Philip's faith. And an opportunity might be an opportunity for you to stretch your faith, not live in the comfort zone that you already have. To do something you've never done before until this opportunity was proposed to you. God is always proposing to you opportunities. Opportunities to break out and break through. Opportunities to get to a, your next level. Your next level in your marriage. Your next level in your relationship. Your next level with your children. Your next level with the gifting that God gave you. Your next level just in life walking with God. They're there every day of our lives. God is the bestower of opportunities. We just don't seem to want to seize them. Well... God has a great plan in store for you. In fact, tell your neighbor, God has a great plan in store for you. And I want to say that God has a new season and a new time for you. And it's found in opportunities. Psalms 84 verse 11 says, No good thing will God withhold those who walk uprightly before him. God created every one of us to be successful, to be victorious, to be triumphant. And before the foundation of the world, he laid out an exact plan. We read it in Jeremiah 29. If you follow his thoughts and you follow his ways, you'll see that plan lived out in your life. You know, it's within his salvation. And as you begin to walk out his thoughts and his plans, he'll continue to change your times and seasons. You won't ever stop from graduating, going forward and going up. You know, his plan is seeded with moments of his favor upon your life. These moments of favor are not ordinary and they're not common. These moments of favor are destiny altering moments. Then when you seize that opportunity, it's for a reason. Never leaves you where you were. It always moves you further than you thought you could be. You know, they are designed to thrust you forward. A God opportunity never sets you back. Marie worked at a small restaurant near Los Angeles. She waited on tables and cooked and cleaned. Basically, she did it all. One day, her boss, the owner, said that more and more customers were requesting some kind of desserts. And at that time, the restaurant didn't have any desserts to offer anyone. The boss then told Marie that she had to come in earlier, put in more hours to make desserts every morning. Well, her first reaction was frustration and anguish. She was upset. She already felt she wasn't getting enough money. She said, I already work hard enough, she thought to herself. And this just isn't fair. But instead of getting bitter, Marie decided to accept the new duty as a challenge. She set her sights on creating the best desserts 
that she could possibly make. Marie's pies caught on. Customers loved them. In fact, people came into the restaurant just to have a piece of one of Marie's pies. Her pies became so popular, Marie decided to open up her own pie company. She took a step of faith, and things quickly fell into place, and she found a bakery. She uh, bought uh, the equipment that she needed. It was a moment and an opportunity. Before long, her little business began to grow and her son joined her. Then both of them got together and opened more and more locations. Eventually, Marie Callender's company had 110 restaurants and an entire line of Marie Callender frozen pies and entrees sold in supermarkets nationwide. She saw an opportunity, but it came dressed in overalls and it looked like work. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about these opportunities and um, we all have them. We've all had them. And I remember one time as I was thinking, I wonder if I've ever missed any opportunity. Well, certainly I have. And... Um, it didn't take me much nor long to figure out what opportunities I had missed. And, um, you know, sometimes when you miss an opportunity, God can still get you there. It just takes you a longer walk <laughs> to get there. But it was about two years ago, <clears throat> and I was in prayer, and, and I began to, I just got frustrated with this one thing I was always carrying. I was always carrying this uh, dread, this regret that I had missed some opportunities in my life, particularly when it came to um, the church. And I really, really repented before God. I mean, it's not that I hadn't before, but I mean, I just, I said, God, I want this off of me. You know, I'm so sorry because you gave me charge to do certain things. And there were land opportunities that we had that we had opportunities to do certain things and even when I got a hold of some of the properties, I took wrong counsel. Uh, and ultimately, I don't blame it on anybody, I made the final decision. And um, we lost a couple of properties that I think would have been extraordinary for Word of Life. And so, um, but I was carrying that for a long time. It was the first time I'm telling you because I'm free of it. <laughs> but, but if anyone's ever carried any regrets, you know what that's like. It's just like with you all day long. And, um, and I remember in prayer, I said, Lord, I, I want to I loose myself of this thing. And he said, then unload it. And I knew exactly what he meant instantly. He basically, he said, you know, get rid of anything and all regrets and missed opportunities. I can remember where I was when it all took place. And um, long story short, though. It was, it was a wonderful time. I mean, really some things broke off my life, and I really felt free. And there's two things that he promised me. One of the things that he promised me, he says, I will restore to you that which the canker worm and the caterpillar have eaten up in your life. Meaning missed opportunity. And number two, he said, and I will restore to you sevenfold. I knew exactly what the references were on both of those. But I also knew... And I had a piece about this, as joyful and as free as I was, <clears throat> that there was a, a, I wasn't in the right season for anything. The time and the season wasn't yet. I was just happy to be free from that thing, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and it was really, really great. Let, let me bring this up to you. What, what makes one person look like they're so blessed like a well-oiled machine that operates like supernatural clockwork, and yet another person's life looked like one day late and a dollar short, mishap after mishap. You know, sometimes people say, well, they're not fast enough, or they're not experienced enough, or they don't have enough wisdom, or they don't have enough of the right friends, or they don't have understanding or skill, and it goes up. I believe it comes down to those missed God opportunities. 
God wants us to embrace by faith the opportunities that he puts in our path. And all he needs from you is faith and a willingness to seize it no matter what it looks like. The reason I bring this up to you is because in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 it says, The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor the bread to the wise, nor the riches uh, to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. And that's true. Opportunity happens to everyone. Let's talk about opportunity. It's not talking about luck, not chance in terms of luck. Um, everyone gets time, has their time, and everyone has their opportunity or chance to embrace the opportunity once before them. Whether we accept or embrace or maximize the opportunity is completely up to us, not up to God. We all have these opportunities, and those who will embrace those opportunities, even if it's dressed with overall, overalls and looks like work, you know, will enjoy. And those who don't, won't. But I want to be, and I'm sure you would like to as well, be like the sons of Issachar, who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Well, let me say this. Everyone has opportunities. But either way, God opportunities will cost you something. Let me explain that. You'll have an opportunity, you'll have a time to latch on and to seize many opportunities in your life. And uh, I'm talking about taking advantage, seeing it, seizing it by faith and so forth. But this is where God opportunities sometimes pass us by. Because we look at an opportunity and the opportunity looks like it costs too much. Or sometimes people just don't activate their faith and they're not willing to pay the price to see that opportunity flourish in their life. And, um, and the bummer is that missed opportunities ultimately cost a person anyway the grief of not having the benefit of an opportunity. But God never gives us opportunities without first giving us the ability to achieve them. So don't make excuses. Negative excuses will keep us from seizing opportunities in our lives. By saying things, it's impossible. Or it can't be done. Or I don't have what it takes. Or you know, what if it doesn't work? Or what if I lose everything? Get that out of your vocabulary. You can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap as you've been wanting to. So today, family, Word Life family, I'd like to share with you a God opportunity he's given to us. After 31 years and only a couple of weeks ago, we have a real God opportunity, and I'd like to share it with you. To seal what I call legacy. To create a great future for generations. To set up um, uh, areas where we can grow as a family in many rare areas, I'll explain to you. And it all begins by being permanently anchored here in downtown Honolulu. What I'm talking about is purchasing the land that you are now standing on. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap. <laughs> Now, for the sake of explanation, and because of time, I think we got started a little late, so give me some extra minutes here, and um, I'll pay them back to you when we're in heaven. <laughs> but this is the property that we're talking about. We're talking about the property that we're on right now, 
and the courtyard. At this point, I'm not talking about the corner property right now. Um, but I want to say for some of you who don't know, from the time that we began this church, one of the first assignments that God told me is stay within the boundaries of the city of Honolulu. It was much easier for me to try to go out and, and start somewhere else, but I really sensed that in my spirit. And um, he said, stay in the heart of downtown Honolulu. And um, we've been a church for 34 years. We've been in this place for 31 years. This place has not always looked this way for 31 years. I guarantee you that. And some of you who've been here, you can attest to that. But we have an opportunity for land purchase. And what does that mean? I'd like to share that with you. We have an opportunity for legacy of our future, setting up future generations. We have an opportunity to grow as a family. And, um, and so I, I'd like to share the opportunity that has opened up to us. It's not my timing. And I just have to say, God has his hand on us and he knows what he's doing. Here's where I got to trust God absolutely 100%. But this is a significant and pivotal time for Word of Life family. See, you need to understand that um, we, we own the building, but we've never owned the land. And that's common here in Hawaii. But we're in a special design district. It's called the Kaka'ako Design District. Capital district, it's called a few other things it might be called. <laughs> But, um, and as you can well see, when we entered into this place, it was like a bucket with holes in it, literally holes in it. But I want you to understand that God said, be wise with the, with, um, and make the most of every opportunity you have. And so I'm presenting this to every one of you here in this room. Um, we have incredible things on this property that we want to see come to pass. Um, I, I can't go into all the details, but I'll give you enough. I just want you to know that before I brought this to you, Pastor Art and Pastor Candice Chang, uh, Pastor Charlie Lorenz, and um, a few others, um, did their due diligence by hiring an architect and an engineer um, to make sure that the purchase of this property would be beneficial for expansion and for growth that would benefit you as the Word Life family and also benefit our community. And with that, I'd like to share with you what we've kind of discovered. Um, without going through a, a lot of details, which I will share more in detail, but it's critical that I share this with you. I really do believe this is a God opportunity. And I sense that the time and the season is now. But here's what we looked at. We looked at centralizing all of our efforts here in one locale. Could that be done? And so... Um, a lot of things have changed in 31 years here in Kaka'ako. You've seen the expanse and the growth um, with a number of major developers and corporations coming in. And they've begun to loosen the rules of building. We used to have what's called a tight envelope over this portion. We could never go as high as you see across the street. There is a, an invisible envelope if you're an architect, you would understand this, or an engineer, um, that we had to stay under. We couldn't go higher than the roof as it is now. And, um, but all of that's been changed because, um, of course, um, ACDA wants to develop the Kaka'ako district. And so that brings a huge benefit and opportunity for Word Alive. So um, we're looking at adding anywhere between 35 to almost 50,000 square feet more to this place. That doesn't mean anything in terms of numbers. Let's just say it's big. 
bigger, okay? But we're not looking at touching the sanctuary, as you see it right here. Wow, it's going to need a paint job, for sure. But we want to relocate uh, to one facility complex to bring all of our operations centralized in this space, which improves the proximity and the expansion um, of serving our church and community. It's also, uh, we want to improve in these areas. We're going to increase in um, multi-purpose function spaces, classes and training areas for the various areas of ministry that we have. We are going to develop a preschool through elementary school, K-1 through 6th at least. And um, yeah, here again, <clears throat> we have slotted out um, uh, a lot of space for generation one. They need to raise up leaders for the future. For those of you who are single, we're going to create a wedding chapel. Come on, somebody. And um, Pastor Casey Tree, one of my board members, he says, that's what he's doing. He said, well, you're going to do it. I'm going to do it. And um, uh, we're also going to put in a gymnasium with sports activities. We're also going to have, um, we're also going to have uh, a Kapuna Center for the elderly. We believe they're as important to our generation as anyone else. Also, um, training centers for the church campuses and plants and performing arts and media spaces. And of course, we're partners and we're very thankful that Pastor Charlie and Pastor Diana um, have always been part of our church. They're ordained under us. They're pastors. They're incredible. They lead and we'll have an extension satellite office here feeding Hawaii together as, as well as developing um, <clears throat> what we call what we had in one of our previous goals and desires, life skill classes for marriage, finance, health, parenting, and other such classes we want to offer. Plus, we are um, looking for, and we will talk more about this later on, about the business opportunities to supplement the church uh, financially, but also to partner with the community in ways where we can both benefit from the spaces that we create. And here's... Um, Jonathan and Lacey that had something to say about why they feel that even though the time frame is short, um, it's important for us to, um, to invest into. Please watch behind me. Ah, uh, Word of Life is my home. Word of Life is my home. Uh, I wouldn't be the man I am today, the husband I am today, and even the father that I'm going to be. I wouldn't be that, that man if it wasn't for Word of Life Christian Center. My name is Jonathan Vasquez, and I work for the federal government. I work for the Army as an analyst. My name is Lacey Vasquez. I'm a teacher at a high school. I am also pursuing my doctoral degree. I've been attending Word of Life for almost 28 years now. So this project is very important to us. Um, for for me, you know, I've been here at Word of Life for a number of years. I met my wife here and for the last nine years uh, we've been married. It's been us. But now this project is about the next generation. You know, we're expecting now. Uh, we're going to be having a son uh, next year in March. And this is about him. This is about dreaming for the next generation. This is about giving towards the next generation. And it's not only about him, but it's about all the families that will continue to come into Word of Life Christian Center. There are many reasons I want to give into this project. One of the main reasons I want to give into this project is because I get to. This is an opportunity that I haven't had. I haven't had this opportunity before to be a part of purchasing the land. My entire life, uh, my family has never owned a home. They never have. We've rented and we've moved from place to place to place. And so when my nieces and nephews grow up, there's not a, a place where we can go and say, this is where this happened. This is where this happened. All of this history. But with word of life here, I can tell my children, hey, at this spot right here, I met your dad. At this spot right here, I learned about Jesus. Right over here is, gosh, all of the important parts of my life I can bring people and say this is where it happened you know I have a place of history here this is my home and I want to invest in my home it's 
It's a tremendous blessing for us. And we know that this is putting our stake in the ground. This is establishing a spiritual home uh, for our family, for our son. Even after, you know, we go on to be with Jesus in many years from now, Word of Life is still going to be here, raising up disciples, still winning souls. Uh, this is truly um, a tangible experience that we get to be a part of in taking ownership of the land and looking at the future generations to come that are going to be blessed and that are going to experience salvation and that are going to experience discipleship all because of what we did in this moment. Yes. This is the perfect time to give. Even if it's 52 days, it's the perfect time to give. It's the holiday season. That's the perfect time to give because the Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added to us besides and there are things that we are believing god for we are believing god for miracles and we understand that when we give into the kingdom of god he always gives back to us he hears our prayers and we know that putting him first and leaning on that principle that if we put him first then everything else will be added to us that we desire here in hawaii we all know that land is expensive and land rarely goes uh, up for sale you know so for word of life us as a family to be given this opportunity this is rare and because of that this is god this is god giving us this this um opportunity to purchase land this is um this it's a miracle you know because we know that it doesn't happen um on a regular basis you know regardless of the time regardless of how much time that we've been given this has been opened up to us by God. You know, God's not limited by time. He's not limited by the number of days that um, we need to come up with the funds for this project. You know, for us, it's about trusting God and doing our part. And that's what we're all given. We're all given a part in this. You know, everybody that's going to be listening to this, every um, that's going to be hearing about this, God has given all of us an opportunity to take ownership of Word of Life Christian Center say, this is my home church. Come on, give him a great big hand clap. So, so in our due diligence, thank you, Jonathan and Lacey, in our due diligence, you know, you see the site. So we did what's called a preliminary study. And you can see this on this next drawing that goes up on the screen. We said, what would it look like if we maximized the space? If we just went for everything that we could possibly do with, within the, the confines of um, envelopes and restrictions and things like that, and that's what it would be, at almost 90,000 square feet. I mean, that is a huge building. And um, I know, right? But then we started talking to the architects because that might become kind of cost prohibitive to try to do something that big. Um, so we looked at... Uh, uh, we looked at the fact, okay, we don't want to affect this building because we put a lot of money into it. And so the next, the next uh, screen goes up, and the architect says, what if we work on the courtyard and develop the courtyard? And you can see the green is the new, the new courtyard. It's a rooftop courtyard. Anyways, um, and the, the pink that you see towards what would be uh, Queen Street there, um, is that they actually allow you to add more space. And, um, and the yellow is not limited to, but it shows you what you can, the various levels that you can put in. But this is just uh, what they call a working study model. And so, again, this next um, screen that you see is a site from above. I think you know that one. The next picture is the first uh, ideas. The next screen, yeah, is the first idea of what it might look like if we were standing across from the fire station. I'm thinking, like, what is that? Anyways, um, and uh, it's, it's really nice, though, I mean, when you stop and look at it, and uh, it's exciting. This next screen shows it from a different angle. It's giving you a little idea. So here I am working with the architect, and we're finding out that this, this, these two facilities, I mean, uh, it, it's quite amazing, you know, uh, and I... Um, you know, when I was in Singapore not too long ago, a good friend of mine, um, uh, Pastor Kong he, uh, he they have such tight restrictions in Singapore um, in that he, he built a building that had to go um, four floors down and I think eight floors up. And at the end of the day...
おはようございます皆様三連休の方もいらっしゃると思いますが土曜日の朝いかがお過ごしでしょうか沖縄もだいぶ朝寒いというまではいかないですけども涼しくなってきました皆様のお住まいの地域はいかがでしょうかニュースとかを見ていると本当にもう本土の方ではすごく寒い朝を迎えていらっしゃると思いますけれどもお風邪など召されていませんかさて今週のパスタートのメッセージ先週に引き続き私たち一人一人には与えられているオポチュニティというその日本語で訳すと後期というようなすごく良いタイミングみたいな意味になるかと思いますけれどもそこの上で私たちはそれを勝ち取っていかなくちゃいけませんよっていうようなチャンスをものにしましょうというようなメッセージでありますで今日のキーワードああ聞いててそうだな3つあったなって思っています一つ目はそのオポチュニティを使って次のレベルに入っていきましょうで2つ目はそのオポチュニティがあると次のシーズン次の私たちの毎日の生活における季節が来ますよその季節に入っていきますよっていうことを言われていましたそして本当に最後の方に、えー、ワード・オブ・ライフのハワイの方の教会に参加しているご夫妻が話していましたけれどもこのオプティニティを使って次の世代のために何かを準備しましょうお子様がいらっしゃる方にはお子様のためにいろいろな組織であったら次世代のためにこのオプティニティを使っていきましょうねっていうような話をされていましたパスタートのメッセージの通り、本当に私たちは何かその次のレベルに入ってきているチャンスが来た時にしっかりとそこを捕まえて次のレベルに入っていかなくてはいけないのかなっていうふうに思います。で、次のレベルに入れば新しい季節が来るということですね。さらにそれを続けていけばそれを成したことは次の世代の人のために用意をされていくということです。先週もこのパスタアートのメッセージを共有させていただきましたけれどもその中で先週パスタアートが一番初めに私たちと共有した聖書の箇所というのはここでした。第一手もての六章の十二節。信仰の戦いっていうの。ここの部分でしたね。このように書かれています。信仰の戦いを勇敢に。戦い。永遠の命を獲得しなさい。あなたはこのために召され。多くの証人たちの前で立派な告白をしました。というように。書かれていますですので私たち一人一人はこの12月のすごくクリスマスを含めた全体的にホリデーシーズンと呼ばれているその時期に私たちの神イエス・キリストの愛をまだ知らない方々に伝えていかなくてはいけない。そんなな季節になりましたもう本当に目の前にクリスマスが来ていますこの週末皆さんどんなふうに過ごされますでしょうか私たちの日本にある同じキャンパスその司教会の横浜では24日の日にクリスマスの礼拝が
午前11時から行われます普段は横浜のキャンパスの礼拝をする場所というのは、まあ、100人弱ぐらい入るところをお借りしてやってるんですけれどもこのクリスマスの時は最低200人というようなスペースを借りてその神の愛を伝えようとしていますつい23日前にハワイにいるフェイスブックのお友達がいるんですけれども沖縄系の方でした金城さんっていう方なんですけれどもこの方がフェイスブックにふっとこういう言葉を挙げられました私たちは何のために生きているんだろうかっていうことを挙げられました本当に私たち時々そういうふうに思ったりします私たちは何のために生きているのかな私たちは毎日何をゴールとして過ごしているのかなって思う時がありますけれども何よりも私たちがこの世に存在する一番大きな理由は私たち一人一人が愛されるためにこの世に生まれてきて私たち一人一人が本当に喜びの中にそれから平和平安の中に生きるために生まれてきてるんですよということを私たちはもう一回確認した方がいいかなって思います。私たちは本当に嫌われたりとか「お前なんかいらない」とかって言われるためじゃなくて「本当にあなたが必要なんだよ」「本当に一人一人が必要なんだよ」というふうに思われてこのように。生を受けて生まれてきたこれはもう本当に間違いない事実ですからお休みを前にしてなんとなく元気がないなとかああもうクリスマスもお正月も来るのになんでこんな毎日なんだろうって思ってる方がいらっしゃったら。ただだ一つだけですあなたは愛されるために生まれてきたんですよこれが私たちの神からのメッセージですイエス・キリストは2000年前に私たちの罪のために十字架の上で死んでくださいましたそして3日後によみがえり今も生きておられるそんな私たちの神でありますさらに言えば私たちの神は備え主であり癒し主であり全ての源であるということが紛れもない事実でありますこのクリスマスからお正月にかけてのお休みの時期に少しだけ今年一年とか今までの毎日を振り返ってみてはいかがでしょうかどんな一年だったかなどんな生活を生まれてきてからしてきたかなということを振り返る季節にされてはいかがでしょうかその中で何か辛いことがあったりとかあ,あんな大変なこともあったしなこんな辛いこともあったしな今辛いんだけどとかいろいろあられると思いますけれども真理はただ一つだけです私たち一人一人は愛されるために生まれてきているということですぜひこの週末
私たち一人一人がもう一回私たちを愛されるために生まれてきたんだよということを自分も認識しながらぜひ周りの人にもあなたを愛されるために生まれてきたんだよっていうふうに伝えてあげてください。この季節いろんな言い方はありますけれどもやはり一番は愛を感じる季節なのかなって思います聖書の中でエペソの五章の一節にこういうふうに書かれています愛されている子供らしく神に習うものとなりなさい。愛される子供らしく、神に習うものとなりなさい。というふうに書かれています。まあ、どういうことかということもいろいろ考えてみると、まず一つ、愛のうちを歩んでいきましょうということです。神の愛のうちを歩みましょう。それから二つ目としては、光の子供として歩んでいきましょう。暗闇の技を明るみに出していきましょうというふうにして、私たちは生きていくことが大切なのかなというふうに思います。私たちの神は目の前が私たちの状況の中でいろいろなことが起きて大変だなって思うこともあるかもしれませんけれども私たち一人一人の人生に計画を与えてくださりそして本当に私たち一人が一人一人がですね見たことも聞いたことも思いもしないものを用意してくださってます。それをつかむために与えられているそのオポティニティをぜひ使ってそれをしっかりと握りしめて自分の次のレベルのためにそして次の季節を迎えるためにさらには次の世代のためにこのオポチュニティを掴んでみていきませんか必ず私たち一人一人の人生の中にはその時が来るかと思います例えば中学3年生とか高校3年生の方であれば次の学校に行ったり社会に出たりそのオポチュニティをどういうふうに自分でつかむのかっていうのは私たちの毎日の生活の中にもありますし。もうすでに働いている方も次の会社に移るとか次の仕事に移るとか自分でお仕事を始められるとかそのオポチュニティをどういうふうに自分の人生の中で取り入れていくのか。さらに言えば例えば。家庭とか会社とか人間関係とかさらには一人一人のその経済の状態とかのダークタイムまあ暗い時あまりうまくいってない時ああなんか喜びもないあなんか毎日なんとなく憂鬱だよねって思う時私たちの神はそれを変えてくださいますでもその根底にあるものは愛であるということをぜひ忘れないでほしいなって思います
やはり人のことを考えたり見たりした時に悪い気持ちで考える人は誰一人いないと思います。私たち一人一人はこの人がその人が友達が家族が職場の仲間がもっと良くなればいいなって思うことが全てのベースメントにあるかと思います。何か嫌なことがあってイラッとすることもあるかと思いますけれどもそれは時間とともに過ぎ去りそこに残るものはやはりその根底にあるものは愛であるということです私たち一人一人が他の人とのその関係を作るときに何が必要なのかなよく企業に伺っていろいろなお話をさせていただくときに例えば信頼ですよとかそれから信用ですよとかちゃんとコミュニケーション通ってますかとかいろんなことをお話をしたりしますけれども例えば自分の会社がお客様の満足度が足りないとかその会社の中でうまく組織として機能していないとかいろんなお話をいろんな場所で伺いますでも最後に自分がその研修の中で皆様と共有させていただくのはこんなふうにいつも言っています。会社のお客様お店のお客様をお客様と見ないで自分の家族と思ったらどういうふうな対応されますか本当に自分の大切な人だと思ったらどんな対応されますかそしてその従業員同士のコミュニケーションがうまくいかないそんなチームの皆さんにはチームの人たちが家族だったらどんな話し方をしますかどんなふうに自分の気持ちを持っていきますかっていうようなふうにいつも共有をさせてていいいただいておりますやっぱりどうしても自分の身内に対してはよくしようって皆さん思ったりするのでそれを考えると私たち一人一人はどんな人に対してもああもう本当に大切な家族の一員だなと思って過ごしていくことが大切なのかなって思います。あともう一つ私たち一人一人が毎日の生活の中で知っていった方がいいなって思うことは関わりのある人を絶対に無視をしないでくださいということです。本当に人に対してその人に対して関心を持っていくっていうことはとっても大切なことだと思います。特に子どもたちに対しては本当に関心を持ってあげて愛を注いであげる愛がなければ人,の人へ対する関心というものは起こりえないので常に見ていてあげる常に気にしてあげるということがすごく大切なのかなって思います。この週末いろいろなところでご飯を食べられたりとか
お出かけされたりとかいろんなことがあると思いますけれども街の中をぜひ見回してくださいふと忘れられた人たちがいるかもしれませんふとその町の片隅に佇たずんで誰からも関心を持たれないそんな人がいるかもしれませんそしたらぜひ一言一声かけてあげてくださいあなたは愛されていますよあなたを愛されるために生まれてきたんですよっていうことを子どもたちだけではないかもしれませんもう本当に長い年月を重ねて生きてこられた方々が家族が他の地に行かれてお一人で住んでいたりとかこの時期にあまり人と関わりのないようなそんな生活を送られているかもしれませんそんな方々にぜひ私たち一人一人が一言「あなたは愛されるために生まれたんですよあなたは愛されていますよ」そんなふうにお声がけをしてみたらいかがでしょうか。本当に車で街中を走っているとすれ違う人の顔のああちょっと寂しそうだなって思うような方もいらっしゃいますクリスマスお正月多くのものを人にプレゼントをしていくっていうことが大切なんじゃないでしょうか物質的なものだけではなくて一声かけるだけでもプレゼントですしその心を持つこともすごく大切なことだと思います聖書ではこのように言われています多くまくものは多くを刈り取るですのでこの時期に多くのことを多くの人にご用意ししてはいかかがでしょうか。そして最後にエレミアの29章の11節にはこのように書かれています「私はあなた方のために立てている計画をよく知っているからだ」と私たちの神は言われます。今年ももう少しで終わりますけれども神はすでに私たち一人一人の将来のためにそのご計画を立ててくださっていますそれをしっかりと聞いて実行していくっていうことがそれこそ私たちに与えられたオポティニティであるなっていうふうに思いますす本当にどんな計画か楽しみですね本当に今年一年いろんなことがあったかと思いますけれども「また次の年は神の良き知らせが多くの人たちに伝えられて」。そのために私たちが働けたらいいなっていうふうに思いますですのでこの時期ぜひ神から与えられたその良き時を過ごしてみませんか愛のうちを歩んでいきませんかそれでは一言お祈りいたします愛する天のお父様
、この朝はありがとうございます。このクリスマスと年末年始の時期にあなたが共にいてくださり、私たち一人一人に多くのことを与えてくださいますように、多くの祝福のうちを歩むことができますように、健康が守られ、経済が守られ、すべてのことが良きことで溢れることを宣言して、イエス・キリストの皆によってお祈りいたしますアメン生放送は今週で最後になりますが来週はパスタアートの横浜でのメッセージを録音でお届けしますまた年が明けたらお会いできることを楽しみにして God bless you